Could I ask all award recipients here tonight to please take your seats as the 2021 Mac Awards Night will commence in approximately one minute. We, the community of Mount Alexander College, acknowledge the Wurundjeri peop people of the Kulin Nation, the traditional owners of the land on which we meet today. We pay our respects to the elders past, present, and emerging. Good evening, everyone. My name is Lachlan, and this is Bryn. Tonight, we will be your masters of ceremony. As the night progresses, you will get to meet our other MCs. We would like to thank all staff, students, families, and guests for attending the MAC Annual Awards Night in person and online to celebrate student successes throughout 2021. Tonight, we are celebrating the awards night virtually with our grads 2021, award winners, and a handful of staff here with us at school. Every year, we have many different awards students are nominated for. These awards include both school awards as well as awards from our community partners. We would like to thank our community partners who have prepared recordings to present awards to students remotely.
We thank all of our spe speakers for their continued support this year and for taking the time to record their award announcements. Some award recipients may have been unable to be with us here tonight, but are attending virtually. We would still like to publicly celebrate their achievements. Eva Lanasarabi will now perform the Australian National Anthem. I would now like to welcome our college principal, Ms. Danny Angelico, to say a few words. Good evening and welcome to our 2021 annual awards. Please join me in once again thanking our VCE school band and Eva Luna's beautiful rendition of the national anthem. I'd like to welcome the award recipients that are here in the room with us tonight and the staff that have been able to join us. And of course, welcome our students, families and special guests that are joining us um, from home. I'd like to welcome the Honourable Member for Essendon, Danny Pearson, Chris Thompson, Regional Director, Department of Education, South Western Victoria, Kate Bell, our keynote speaker for tonight, Angelica Insera, School Council President and members of the College Council, and community members and special guests who are presenting awards this evening. Welcome. Tonight is a night of celebration and it's a time to honour and congratulate, of course, our award recipients for their efforts and their academic and leadership excellence, but all students really for their own individual successes and triumphs this year and a year that once again has been quite challenging. Tonight, we'll also celebrate our 2021 graduates who, despite the challenges of the last two years, have demonstrated time and time again how incredibly adaptable, flexible, resilient, and just shown absolute grit in getting through the last two years. And I'm sure that they'll be well prepared for whatever life throws at them. It is a night to thank the staff at MAC who have continued to inspire, encourage and support our students. Thank you for your unwavering enthusiasm and absolute professionalism. Dealing with the enormous workload that comes with remote learning, the pressures of working from home, balancing your own personal lives and for many who had their own children learning remotely as well. I know I speak on behalf of the students and families. Thank you, you are truly exceptional. Exceptional at what you do, and you are exceptional people. Thank you. 
Before I continue, I too would like to acknowledge that this awards evening takes place, place on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nations and acknowledge them as traditional owners of this land. I'd also like to pay my respects to their elders past and present and any elders from other communities who are part of our MAC community and to those who are joining us remotely. Welcome. There isn't much more that I can say that hasn't already been said about the impact of lockdown and remote learning, but I do want to say, however, just how incredibly proud I am of what we've been able to achieve as a school. So tonight, I'd like to focus on the highlights. We started the year with 143 entry students, which is the biggest cohort we've had in a very long time, um, and an overall enrolment of about 590 students. And that's an incredible increase from 440 when I first started here in 2019, so it's incredible. And it speaks to the success of the school and the fact that it's doing a great job in catering for the students in this community and providing great educational outcomes. We've had, I think, some of our best sports carnivals yet, and um, it was just fantastic to see the high, high rates of participation from students, but particularly our entry students, who, uh, you know, led uh, a lot of the singing and dancing on the day, the house novelty events, and it was really great um, to see them really getting into the house spirit. This year we saw an increased number of students participating in leadership opportunities and programs, and. You know, we were really fortunate to be able to celebrate some assemblies together and showcase the talents of our students and recognise their achievements. Of course, we pivoted in and out of remote learning uh, quite seamlessly, really, and in a virtual environment, we enjoyed some other key events such as Book Week and Science Week. And it was really great to see that our students were leading a lot of those activities, um, you know, from science competitions to open mic events and podcasts. So I, I really want to thank um, the students who took on those um, roles. Despite the challenge of the last two years, enforced social disconnect from the school, our attitudes to school survey results remain above state average in almost all measures, which is incredible. Our students have continued to thrive academically and we've seen improvement in all measures of the NAPLAN at years seven and nine. And the percentage of students at year seven in the top two bands um, is well above the state average in reading, spelling, grammar, punctuation and numeracy. And at year nine, there's been an increase in the number of students, again, in all measures in the top two bands, and uh, above state averages in high growth in spelling and writing. And that's great because, whether you know it or not, the staff have been working really hard on improving writing. Um, in the school for the last two years. So those uh, dividends are paying off, which is great. In 2022, of course, we'll continue to support some of our students who did struggle during remote learning and um, we'll support them with the tutoring in schools program uh, as well as the literacy and numeracy program that we started last year and it's been really, really successful this year. 2022 will be the year to reset and to rebuild with a strong emphasis on school connectedness, school and house spirit and identity, collaboration and community. It is the year that we will revisit what we stand for and the importance of student empowerment and the student-led curriculum. In term two, the school's going to undergo a school review, which means looking at our achievements over the last four years and set the scene for the next four years. And that will be done with the students, of course the staff and the families and the student leadership team. And, and your role in that will be very, very important for setting the scene for the next four years. The building works will continue throughout all of next year um, and the five-storey building is on track to be finished in mid-December, which is great news. And the inconvenience of next year, I promise, will be worth it. The reward will be worth it. Um, this is going to have, this building's going to have a huge impact on our capacity to continue to deliver really great and differentiated curriculum experiences for students and with the amount of specialised spaces, but um, also, you know, some really wonderful indoor and outdoor recreational spaces. I have enjoyed working with the student le leadership team this year, and I know it has been a bit difficult, but it's been really great. And I want to congratulate Marcella and Brendan and Bryn, Vice-Captain, 
for um, their work in working with the student leadership team. And I really particularly enjoyed working on aspects of the building design with them and their insights um, were just so, so important in informing some of those really important design elements of the building. I am looking very much forward to working with our new college captains, Arlo and Innes, and our vice captains, Bryn and Raya, and the whole leadership team. And the student leadership team will have a pivotal role, as I said, in helping us uh, undertake that review. But, you know, I'm really looking forward to working with you in continuing to build our student empowerment model and take it to its next level. Before I conclude, I'd like to thank uh, Angelica and Sarah, our school council president, and the school council members for their efforts and support this year. The policy subcommittee has done an enormous amount of work in um, rewriting and updating many policies, and I'd really like to thank you. And the school council has been terrific in actually working with the VSBA and the architects on some, again, some really important aspects of this building. Thank you to our wonderful PFA, who I know have been frustrated because COVID has certainly gotten in the way of their fundraising uh, activities this year, but this is a bit of a plug for them. They're having a barbecue on the 5th of December at the Footscray Bunnings, so please come along and support them and support our school. I want to thank the staff that have organised tonight. It is a, a huge undertaking, so thanks Kate, Didham, Conrad and everyone else who's worked behind the scenes. And um, to the students, uh, I know we've got students taking photos, all our presenters um, who are, you know, I know are going to do an amazing job. Uh, they always do. So thank you. Congratulations to all of you sitting here right now. Well done. It's been tough and you're sitting here because you've tried your best and you've excelled, so well done on a fantastic achievement. It has been an honour and a privilege to lead this amazing school community. And I look forward to 2022 with hope and optimism and working with you to take MAC to even greater heights. Enjoy the rest of the night. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Ms. Angelico. We will now introduce our keynote speaker for, for this evening, Jackie Bell. At just 20 years of age, Jackie Bell found herself at the start line of a 50 kilometer ultra marathon. She had never run over 30 kilometers before. On the morning of the marathon, she jumped in her car at 3 a.m. in Brisbane and headed to the Gold Coast for the race. She didn't even know at this point that 50 kilometers was considered an ultra marathon. Fast forward to 26, Jackie has now conquered thousands of kilometers across some of the harshest deserts and terrain in the world, from the running 250 kilometers across the hottest desert in Africa to the coldest in Antarctica self-supported. In 2019, Jackie became the youngest person in history to run an ultramarathon on all seven continents. Whilst completing this as a personal ambition, Jackie has now raised over $25,000 for the mental health charity, the White Cloud Foundation. Jackie continues to step out of her comfort zone and leads by example for her actions in showing others that anything is possible when you put your mind to it. But it hasn't always been smooth sailing for this young Brisbane girl, and like all of us, she has faced many challenges. Today, she'll be chatting to us about how she overcame the obstacles she encountered and how she came out on the other side stronger than ever, mentally and physically. Get ready for a small video first, which will give an insight into what drives one to compete in some of the most extreme endurance foot races in the world and everything that comes with it. My name is Jackie Bell. I'm 26 years of age and I'm an ultramarathon runner from Brisbane. In 2018, I started a journey to become the youngest person in the world to run a multi-stage ultramarathon on all seven continents. I started out on this journey to overhaul my mental health. That's why I've been raising funds for the White Cloud Foundation. This is a charity that I chose because I had some very bad years myself. This charity believes in not only your mental health, but also your physical, social, and emotional. I've now raised over $23,000 for the White Cloud Foundation. Marathon runner Jackie Bell joins us from Brisbane. Jackie Bell will tackle an ultra marathon across four continents. 23 year old Jackie Bell. She wants to become the youngest woman to complete the Four Deserts Ultra Marathon. 
250 kilometres over five days. That's what an ultra marathon is. In the driest, in the hottest, in the coldest, and in the windiest deserts on earth. So not only running 250 k's over five days, but you're doing it in the desert. You carry everything on your back so it's self-supported, except for water and shelter. Each day you run approximately a marathon, and then on day four there's a long day where you run anywhere from 80 to 100 kilometers. You're out there for the long slog all week, and you really find yourself in some tough situations. I literally feel like I'm going to pass out. I just need water so bad. There's no escape, there's nowhere to go, so I might as well just make the most of whatever the situation is. At the end of the day, you wanted to be there. I have no water. Oh. I'm going to die. <laughs> I like vomited a bunch before and I feel really cold. Okay. Masculine years. Let's just say I was pretty cheeky, sarcastic, and a challenge at times. But my teachers stuck it out with me, as have yours here at Mount Alexander College. So thank you to all of the teachers here today watching this. My years in school have absolutely flown by. I'm now 26 years of age, and my days are filled in quite a unique way. I'm not in the usual nine to five role, and there's been absolutely no blueprint to where I've gotten to today. My days begin at about 4.30 a.m. and are filled to the brim with training, email responses, mapping out runs, working at a gym. I have calls with agencies discussing possible campaign ideas. I quote videographers, and the list goes on and on. No day is ever the same, and I am constantly learning. I decide to usually call it a day when my emails begin to sound a little bit like gibberish. Rewinding to my schooling days for a moment, this is where my learning really began. But it wasn't just in the classroom. It was during lunch breaks, playing sports with my friends, and not to mention in detention. As far back as I can remember, I've had a bit of a go with the mentality. When I set a goal for myself, I did everything necessary to get to it. But to get to this goal usually requires a thing called hard work. From a young age, I learned that hard work and dedication isn't easy. But if something's worth doing, it's never going to be easy. My first real sporting endeavor was tennis. Everyone at school knew this because they'd seen me training and hitting tennis balls on the court before school, after school, and even in my lunch breaks. Growing up, I had the dream of being a professional tennis player. In year seven, when I was in the absolute thick of my training, I'd run into my um, parents' room in the morning at about 4.30 in the morning, similar time, I guess, to now, and I'd say, Dad, Dad, let's go to the courts. Tell them because the poor guy probably looked a bit like a pushy parent. But it was actually the other way around. I'm sure my dad didn't have the strongest desire to be at the tennis courts before summer. But what tennis has taught me was that, well, I guess there are consequences for our behaviours. I'd be having an off morning and I'd be hitting balls out, out, out. I'd be swearing and carrying on. My tantrum would be making a five-year-old look pretty good, but my dad wouldn't have a bar of it, and he decided one day to pick up the tennis balls, jump in the car, and off he went. Yep, at about 12 years of age, I'd have to find my way home about seven kilometers. It probably served me right. Unfortunately, I seemed to be a bit of a sucker for punishment, and I continued to have these tantrums, but I had to learn to get faster at that run home. Otherwise, I'd cop it, cop it double as bad at my mum because I'd now be two hours late to school if I was slow on that run home. Fast forward to leaving school at 17. Let's just say that I thought that I knew everything and I thought that I had my life pretty mapped out. In New Town, I completed my certificate three in fitness and for a half a day a week, I was working alongside a personal training, personal trainer and gaining some really valuable people and life skills. 
After school, I then continued on and completed my cert for and fitness and a Delphi planner. And I had the grand plan of becoming a physiotherapist for a sports scientist. It was pretty exciting, really, leaving school with this newfound personal power, choice, opportunity. The world really felt like it was my oyster. I could explore absolutely any avenue I wanted. I was thriving as I started to come into my own. This was until a few curveballs were thrown at me. So, this is when I realised life isn't always smooth sailing. And I guess when the going got tough at around the age of 19, I found that the wheels began to fall off. I was struggling without the structured environment of school, having my family around me, and living at home. I started to make, I guess, what you could call some pretty poor decisions that were directly impacting me. But I just didn't know what to do. And I was thinking long term, and I was just fixated on the big picture that I was flailing around in my day to day. I was chopping and changing, and I was just looking for this short term gratification. I wasn't able to stick with anything because nothing felt like the right fit for me. So at the age of 22, I decided to muster up a last ditch effort and really go all in on something and try and turn things around for myself. Thanks to the good old World Wide Web and the old, I guess you could call it, YouTube vortex, I discovered ultra marathons. So ultra marathons, these aren't just a marathon, these are anything over the usual 42 kilometers. I knew that it was up to me to, I guess you could say, change my situation. I needed a goal and I decided that ultra marathons, this was going to be it. I had no idea at the time the journey that I was about to embark on though. So four years on, I've actually now completed 13 multi-stage races across some of the harshest and most remote locations in the world, ranging from 250 to 350 kilometers, over five to seven days, fully self-supported. And I continue now even to step out of my comfort zone and challenge myself. I take on challenges I think I might not be capable of. Just last year, I completed my first ever biggest race. It was a 100 miler. It was 160k in one go. Now this distance is pretty hard to truly comprehend until you're out there with your legs ticking over and over. So I want to put this into a bit of perspective for you. The 160k race was just under 200,000 steps. The elevation was the same as climbing Everest and I burnt about 19,000 calories. And yeah, I absolutely loved it. I never knew that ultra running was going to be the answer for me, or that thing that made me tick. But I knew that by having a goal, setting myself a plan, and I guess working towards it, that I was getting structured back in my life and I was heading in the right direction. I've learned that there are so many different avenues and roads that people can take to get to where they wish to go. But even then, it may not be the end point. For me, it was just about getting started. It was about getting this forward momentum, and then I knew it would have this flow over effect into every aspect of my life. I still don't know exactly where I'm heading, or where I'm going to end up, but there are constantly new opportunities presenting themselves to me. And it's super exciting. I say yes, I take risks, and I constantly try new things. In the race I compete in, there's quite a strong male feel a lot of the time. And this is because of this type of bravado and mentality that men have. They say yes to things and then they figure it out later. Whereas a lot of women don't sign up to things until they feel 110% ready to take it on or that they're 110% prepared. At 22 years of age, I sure wasn't prepared enough and I didn't have it figured out as to how I was going to run 250k across the Namibian desert, standing at the start line of that race with 14 kilograms on my back, I was not 110% prepared, but I was stepping up and taking it on. I encouraged young women and men watching this to take on those challenges when they present themselves, because even if it's scary, I can guarantee you're capable of so much more than what you think. It's now, it's this time, while you're in school, in your schooling years, to have a go at absolutely everything. 
Make the most of all the opportunities that present themselves. While you've got a support network around you, whether your friends, family, your teachers, these people will support and guide you. I can set limitations on myself, all those around me, and neither should you. Don't shy away from setting big, slightly crazy goals. Pick a goal, set your plan, and get after it. Thank you. I began this undertaking to make a huge change within myself. The greatest outcome from this whole undertaking is seeing so many people around me starting to take on things that they never thought they'd be capable of. It isn't always just the one track to success in life and you can take the alternative route and if you are passionate about it enough, you'll find a way to make it happen and work really hard to be successful with it. I don't think everyone needs to make such a drastic decision and go and run across every desert in the world or anything like that, but I would just say to people to do something that they enjoy each day. If it's go for a run in the morning or have coffee with friends or watch the sunrise, just incorporate those little things into your life each day and before you know it, it might be something much bigger than what you ever thought it would be. This is the seventh stage of the Jackie Bell. She's the youngest competitor. She's the coolest. Five out of the end, seven partners. Report to Jackie Bell. In my life, I don't want to be watching things happen. I want to be making them happen. At the moment, that means running a lot and running all of these different races. And that's what really brings me purpose and drive. We would like to thank Jackie, who is joining us from Brisbane virtually, and for sharing her story and insights. We would now like to welcome Max School Council President, Miss Angelica Insera, who will say a few words about the year that has been. everyone and welcome. Well, where did 2021 go? I can't believe it's been four years since our family joined the Mac community. The school we were drawn to had a vision to foster an inclusive and supportive learning environment in which students are empowered to direct their own learning. In 2021, Mount Alexander continues to strive to deliver on this vision. The dedicated teachers and staff, led by our principal, Danny Angelico, and our assistant principal, Meg Rawlins, have demonstrated commitment, insight, empathy, positivity, creativity, tenacity, and care. They are an extraordinary group of educators, administrators, and support staff. On behalf of all Max students and their families, I say thank you. In the role of School Council President for 2021, I've had the privilege of working closely with a respectful, dynamic and engaged group of School Council members. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank them all, sincerely, for their commitment to their roles and their support of the School Council and me as President. Thank you to our indefatigable Principal Danny, who consistently champions the needs of our students and teachers. Danny, along with Meg Rawlins and Justine Johnston, collaborate openly and inclusively with School Council, providing context and guidance. Thank you to the always willing business manager, Laura Sandham, for her support, especially to the Finance Subcommittee. Thank you to the parent and community members who volunteer their time to represent parents, carers and the school community. And lastly, thank you to our student school counsellors, Marcella Martin and Luke Vella. 
It is fantastic to have Mac's student voice represented so eloquently on our school council. Marcella and Luke are strong advocates for their fellow students and their experiences of student life provide valuable insights to school council discussions and decisions. It's been a busy year for school council, which has been particularly focused on two key areas. The first area of focus has been policy. This important part of school council work has been undertaken by the policy subcommittee who have worked diligently and collaboratively with students and staff to develop and review 10 school policies that have all been approved by school council. You can check them out on the website. The second area of focus for School Council has been the Capital Works project for the construction of Mac's new learning hub, amphitheatre and associated landscaping. During the course of this year, School Council members have heard presentations by Kozlov Architecture and contributed to the consultation process. With demolition almost complete, the building phase is finally underway and the whole school community is excitedly observing this transformational project as it begins to take shape. We thank the Victorian School Building Authority and our local member Danny Pearson for their ongoing efforts to ensure Mac students have high quality, flexible teaching and learning spaces that are sure to inspire students to create, investigate, analyse, explore and collaborate. The upgraded outdoor facilities and amphitheatre will provide places for students to engage, socialise and thrive. It really is a remarkable time for Mount Alexander College. So while we look to the future, we also keep an eye on the here and now. Tonight we celebrate the achievements of the past year not only those of the award recipients and the exceptional 2021 graduates, but all students at Mac. It's been quite a ride and all your futures look bright and shiny. Congratulations, everyone. Please now enjoy our VC VCE media screening distracted by Kobe Hilu. Me and get a couple hundred, please. Bags up like I'm running Christmas Eve. 
on the back and need what I got with G's and I'm taking off. Yeah, talk to me nice, she look good. What's your address? Baby, I take flight in my hood, who's rejecting? Present on my sins to the Lord, I'm distracted. Present on my sins to the Lord, I'm distracted. Talk to me nice, she look Our 2021 college captains, Marcella Martin and Brendan Henry, will now reflect on their experiences leading the school in 2021. Good evening, students, teachers, and all parents and other students that are joining virtually tonight. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners and custodians of the land on which we meet today, the peoples of the Kulin Nation. I also pay my respects to their elders, past and present, and others that may be here with us today. This night is a celebration of all students and teachers and their academic and community achievements. Congratulations to everyone who is, who is receiving an award tonight and an even bigger congratulations to all students and teachers for making it to the end of an incredibly difficult year. Through my time as school captain, I've gained incredible experience in leadership and in my appreciation for MAC has grown. I've had the immense privilege of representing students on the school council and through this, I've I have a greater appreciation for the staff members that keep this school running. I would like to thank Miss Angelico, Angelica and Sarah and Peter Horman, as well as everyone else on the school council who have really demonstrated the value they place on the student opinions in decisions made by the school. I wish much luck to next year's college captains and vice captains. The school is in safe hands with Arlo and Innes, as well as Bryn and Rhea. Thank you very much again for giving me the incredible honor of being your school captain. Good evening, teachers, parents, students, community members, and all of us watching virtually. My name is Brendan, and I'm one of the 2021 college captains. I feel very grateful to stand here and reflect on this year's events with you. Being a student leader has been very fulfilling, and I have been able to bring many of my peers' concerns to light. I'm proud to have served a school that really listens to the issues that their students face. Although COVID-19's reemergence this year affected many of the student leadership team's plans, they did an outstanding job in organizing the events that were able to run, such as Open Day. I want to thank my teachers and Ms. Stefanovich for supporting us when we needed it. My time at MAC this year was very eventful, and this support enabled me and Marcella to be role models for many people and guide them in whatever way we could. A special congratulations to all the award recipients tonight. As someone who has been with you throughout 2021, I can tell you that this is truly a night to celebrate. I also want to commend the 2022 college captains Arlo and Ines, as well as vice captains Bryn and Rhea. You are all very passionate and talented I look forward to hearing the wonderful things you will be doing next year at MAC. Best of luck to you and your endeavors in 2022. Marcella and Brendan will now present our 2022 college captains, Arlo Pili and Ines Adil Ahmed with the MAC braid. Passing over the braid symbolizes the handing over of responsibility to our incoming captains. The braid is made from four ribbons. Each of the ribbons represents the color from each of our houses, Apollo, Artemis, Athena, and Poseidon. When bound together, the braid represents Max community strength and unity that comes from working together. Innes and Arlo will now make their first address as college captains.
Good evening, everyone. My name is Inas, and I'm honored to have been elected as college captain and excited in leading you, my fellow students, in 2022. What a year it has been, unexpected, unprecedented, unrelenting, unusual, uncertain, but not in the least underwhelming. For all of us, 2021 has been another challenging year. Unlike quarantine, COVID, and social distancing, resilience is the only one that's going to be just as relevant when the pandemic is over. Resilience is the quality that was summoned in us by all the challenges of 2021, and it's also the quality that's going to carry us forward in 2022. Tonight, on behalf of myself and students of MAC, we would like to express our gratitude to all of the teachers and staff who helped us in this difficult journey. Congratulations to all the students who have persevered throughout the online learning, to all previous year and VC students who completed the exams last week. I would also like to give a special congratulations to our 2021 graduates who have risen to these challenges, adopted and adapted to change, and demonstrating resilience to make the best outcome in their VC exams. As you cherish the fruits of your hard work, I wish the success keeps following you in everything that you do. Dream new dreams, embark on who you are, embrace life with passion, and keep reaching for the stars. So shine on and go for it. Once again, thank you for honoring me with this position and with the help of my fellow college captain, Arlo, and vice captains, Rhea and Bryn, together with the leadership team, I hope to serve you well and use this experience in pursuing positive change at our school. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Arla, and I'll be one of the college captains for 2022. First of all, I'm super excited to be able to represent the MAC community alongside Inez and represent your voices as much as possible. I know this year has been turbulent and difficult for everyone, including staff, so I'm honoured to be elected and to bring MAC collectively to a much better place. Throughout the lockdown periods, I want to congratulate each and every one of you. I know that the past three years have been filled with uncertainty, so I want to take a moment and congratulate you for trying your hardest and applying yourselves. I know it wasn't all doom and gloom though, and there were certain creature comforts that enjoyed by many students as well. For me, it was definitely waking up later, and in most cases, learning from my bed. Um, though, as it may seem like we're on the home straight, there's still much work to be done. Especially as the new building and construction is going and has already caused some disruptions. I aim to make MAC an inclusive and welcoming school to everyone. And I have some exciting plans for 2022 to be able to achieve that. I also wanna especially congratulate every award recipient here tonight. Your outstanding effort and work hasn't gone unnoticed. So with me and Inaz partners in crime for next year, I have no doubt that we'll be able to bring the school together and flourish as a result. This year has been another challenging for all of our community. However, as always, we as a community have all continued to show our inner strength, uh, resilience when facing more remote learning, quarantines, isolations, and lockdowns. This evening is a time to celebrate this year and also start to look forward to next year. Our VC music exam band will now play Message in a Bottle.
We will now celebrate and recognise student engagement, achievement and leadership in learning throughout the course of 2021. Each of our four house leaders will present the School Value Awards. From Apollo, Konrad Sosnowski. From Artemis, Stephanie Balaburov. From Poseidon, Aaron Murphy. And lastly, in Vivian Duong's absence, Madison White, who will present the Athena Awards. At MAC, our college values are at the core of everything we do. Each of the houses have nominated a student who has led by example throughout the year through exemplifying the characteristics of our values. For each house, we'll be presenting the Community and Engagement Awards and Respect and Integrity Awards. The Community and Engagement Award is presented to students who are active in promoting and upholding a safe and inclusive learning environment. These students are actively involved and immerse themselves in the whole school community. They seek out opportunities to learn from experience. These students not only participated in, but have also led on-site and online programs within the school and beyond. The Integrity and Respect Award recognises students who are act ethically and honestly and are transparent in their interactions. Students who receive this award not only exemplified this value this year, but also brought others on board they demonstrated respect for themselves, others, and the learning environment. They have modeled courteous interactions with all members of the MAC community. I will now ask each of the heads of house to present their house awards. We will begin with Apollo, followed by Artemis, and then Poseidon, and lastly, Athena. For Apollo, for respect and integrity goes to Estelle Kingston. And for community engagement is Arby Alex. Okay, for Artemis House, for community engagement, it's Kip Toy. And for respect and integrity, it goes to Anthony Park. The Poseidon Community and Engagement Award goes to Jerry Young. <laughs> and the Respect and Integrity Award goes to Lachlan Janitsky. The Community and Engagement Award for Athena goes to Emily Sanderlings. And the Respect and Integrity Award for Athena House goes to Katsuki Yamanaka. Congratulations to all award recipients. 
We will now begin to present the curriculum awards. These awards are based on the key learning areas, or KLAs, and will be presented by our teaching and learning leaders, or TOLs, for each key learning area. The students nominated for curriculum awards uh, demonstrate excellence in the subject areas, as well as growth, growth in learning across the 2021 academic year. For each of the curriculum areas, we award three categories, which align with our MAC vertical learning model. As students at MAC can undertake courses regardless of their age, there will be three awards, one for entry-level subjects, another for above-entry-level subjects, and another for senior subjects, for senior school subjects. We will begin with Jess Fridman, who will present the English Awards. The Entry Award goes to Harvey Vlachos. The Above Entry Award goes to Bill Ha Ryan. Finally, the Senior Award goes to Erin Breeze. Jess Friedman will also present the EAL Awards. The Entry Award goes to Matthias Lin. The Above Entry Award goes to Hindia Osman. And finally, the Senior English Award goes to Jax Zhang. Jonathan Sherlock will, will now present the Humanities, the Humanities Awards. The Entry Humanities Award goes to Jared Thompson. The Above Entry Humanities Award goes to Michael Asmilash. And last, but certainly not least, the Senior Humanities Award goes to Drew Trier. Jonathan Sherlock will also present the Languages Awards. The entry award goes to Emily Ahara. While the above entry award goes to Nakita White. Andrea Stefano will now present the Mathematics Awards on behalf of Mr. Justin Jones. The Entry Maths Award goes to Mark Lebanski. The Above Entry Maths Award goes to Solomon Faulkner. And the Senior Maths Award goes to Zoe Hu. Miriam, Miriam Felcher Berkovich will also present, will now present the Science Awards. The Entry Science Award goes to Mohamed Rizvi. The Above Entry Award goes to Bay Lana Daly. And the Senior Award goes to Lavinia Montero da Silva. Yay! Adriana Page will now present Health and Physical Education, Education Awards. The Entry Award goes to Ava Hodgson. The 
Trophy Above Entry Award goes to Hindia Osman. And finally, the Senior Award goes to Jerry Ng. Kate Stevanovich will now present the Art Awards on behalf of Didim on behalf of Didim Aiden. The entry award goes to Audrey Audrey Casa Horsfield. The above entry award goes to Sam Khalil. And the senior award goes to Joshua Coates. Kay Stavanovich will also present the, te the technology awards on behalf of Didim Aiden. The entry award goes to Alicia Henner. The above entry award goes to Aiden Snabel. And lastly, the senior award goes to Inas Adil Ahmed. Congratulations to all of our award recipients so far. We also acknowledge the efforts of all of our students here at MAC. There have been many forums throughout the year, both on-site and during remote learning, where students at MAC have been able to demonstrate their adaptability, creativity, leadership, academic achievements, and excellence. We will now screen Mia Portlock's VCE media piece, Apparition.
Brendan and I will now begin presenting our extracurricular awards. We will begin by recognising commitment to sporting excellence. The following awards are being presented to students who have demonstrated sporting excellence above and beyond. Firstly, Mr McVeigh and Ms Pajic will be presenting the Sports Achievement Awards to athletes who have reached extreme heights in 2021. These two students have played a pivotal role in growing and promoting soccer within our school. They've assisted with coaching and provide leadership. They both epitomise what it means to be a sport person at MAC. Congratulations to both Thomas Morrissey and Khalid Farrar for the Male Sports Achievement Award. This next award is for a student who has demonstrated fantastic effort, particularly in the pool in, at the swimming carnival and representing MAC at both divisional and regionals at inter-school sports. For this amazing effort, we would like to congratulate Sailor Warren for the Female Sports Achievement Award. The Ivy Nguyen Creative Arts Scholarship was established to honor Ivy, a student at our school who tragically passed away in 2018. Ivy had a passion for the arts and all things creative. This scholarship recognizes one student each year who demonstrates an outstanding passion and commitment in supporting themselves and others in the creative arts. We welcome Mr. Del Forno, to the stage to present this award. This year, MAC has continued to work and adapt to both face-to-face -face vir and virtual learning events and showcases aimed at reaching and connecting with the wider school community. The Whole School Community Spirit Award will be presented by Ms. Runcie. Hello. Um, this student used her own time, initiative and resources to run a regular and inclusive lunchtime club which works to promote the importance of teenagers being politically aware and engaging in political issues. And we all know how important that is today. Um, congratulations to Chantal Leon for exemplifying whole school community spirit and also serving the whole community by helping our teenagers become more um, actively politically active. Thank you, Chantal. The Student-Led Community Spirit Award recognizes our student-led philosophy here at MAC. This award goes to a student who has gone above and beyond in taking every opportunity to develop their personal leadership as well as bringing others on board. Ms. Stefanovic will be presenting this award. So my time working with Lachlan, since he has come here um, in year seven, the last three years, he's always epitomized the student-led philosophy that we have here at this school. And in particular this year, he's really taken on board that uh, student-led learning um, and he has done some amazing things um, in regards to his learning and the things that he does within the classroom but not just the classroom but beyond so he's a really great contributor to our school community thank you very much Lachlan for all that you do and congratulations <laughs> Entry students this year have been involved in the True North Leadership Program, which was facilitated by Emma Carney from the Huddle. Emma will now present the North Star Award. Good 
In 2021, the Huddle worked with a group of Year 7 students to complete the True North program. True North is a holistic personal development program that builds resilience and greater understanding of self and others. This year, we awarded the North Star Award to Jasmine Ellis. Warrant Officer Shane Duncan will now present the Australian Defence Force Long Tan Leadership Awards and the Future Innovators Awards. To the Principal, Miss Angelico, teachers, staff, parents and students of Mount Alexander College, and especially the graduating class of 2021, thank you for inviting me as the representative of the Australian Defence Force to present the 2021 Long Tan Youth Leadership and Future Innovators Awards. I'm Warren Shane Duncan, and I've served in the Army for 20 plus years, and I'm currently working at Simpson Barracks in Watsonia. Your school is one of approximately 2,300 schools that participate in the Long Term Leadership and Future Innovators Awards. The Australian Defence Force recognises and celebrates qualities such as leadership, teamwork, respect for others, doing one's best and mateship and it places great importance on these qualities. It is these very qualities that have contributed to the development of the nation's characteristics and identity. The Department of Defence provides these awards so that young people can participate and appreciate the wider role of the Australian Defence Force and how it plays an important part in the culture and service of duty. These are the values demonstrating that each other all the time the Australian Defence Force contributes to the nation in many ways. For example, COVID assist, manpower after natural disasters like floods and fires, peacekeeping, border protection and surveillance. The Australian Defence Force is an extraordinary organisation of men and women who together are able of accomplishing many extraordinary things. This award enables the Australian Defence Force to highlight the achievements of today's youth who will become tomorrow's leaders. It recognises and rewards high achieving students who contribute to their fellow students and the broader community. On behalf of the Australian Defence Force, I congratulate the long term winners of Year 10, Bryn Valentine. Year 12 winner is Bethany Tang. The Future Innovators Award for Year 10 is Monique Duncan, and the Year 12 goes to Selma Salat. I wish you all the best for the future. Have a safe and Merry Christmas. Thank you. Thank you, Warrant Officer Shane Duncan. MAC is proud to be partnering with the Skyline Foundation. Skyline offers the Skyline program, who for successful students, this program provides not just financial support in their final years of schooling, but also academic and wellbeing support, mentorship and residential programs delivered through the University of Melbourne. We are pleased to invite David Palmcourt from Skyline Foundation to present and welcome our successful 2022-2023 Skyline program recipients. Good evening. I am David Palmcourt from the Skyline Foundation. At Skyline, we run a program for high ability students who may be dealing with some challenges in their lives. We accept students into the program in year 10 in order to provide them with financial, academic, career and wellbeing support throughout years 11 and 12. At Skyline, our goal is that we assist students to achieve entry into tertiary study or their career of choice. In my role as program manager, I am lucky enough to work closely with the students in the program and with our partner schools. This year, we received six strong applications from students from Mount Alexander College, and I'm thrilled that three of the students have been successful. I had the great pleasure of meeting the students during the interview process and all of them demonstrated drive, academic talent and passion for learning. 
The three students who were highly commended but unfortunately unsuccessful are Marty Hassan, Kang Pham, and Muna Osman. All three are in yet. All three are impressive young people, and we are sure that they have a bright future ahead of them. The three students who have gained entrance to the program are Arlo Pilly, Bilhar Ryan, and Kevin Tran. We are very excited to be supporting these three students, and we look forward to helping them to achieve their goals. We are honoured to have Mount Alexander College as a partner school of the Skyline Foundation, and we would like to congratulate the entire school community for getting through the immense challenges posed by the last two years. Enjoy your evening. Congratulations, Bilha, Kevin, and Arlo. We would also like to congratulate Muna Osman, Kang Pham, and Mahdi Hassan, who were awarded a highly commended certificate. VCAL enables students to undertake an applied learning pathway with many students going on to undertake work placements in a wide range of trades. The Bunnings VCAL Pathway Award recognizes a student who has demonstrated their commitment to their work placement. Abigail and Lily will now present the Bunnings VCAL Pathway Award. Hello everyone and happy graduation to all the year 12th and month Alexander College. You have all done a fantastic job to get this point through such a tough year. I hope you all are very proud. My name is Abby and this is Lily. We are from Bunnings in Maravina. Today we are going to award someone with the Bunnings VCAL Award Certificate and Bunnings Gift Card for thriving in VCAL despite of the challenges thrown their way this year. So this year, the Bunnings VCAL Award goes to How Ma for achieving their pathway to go on into the trade industry. Congratulations for doing such a wonderful job and we look forward to seeing you in store soon, picking up all your new tools. Great job, congratulations. Thank you, Abigail and Lily. Ellen Sandel, our local state member for the seat of Melbourne, will now present the Young Women's Environmental Award. Hi everyone, Ellen Sandel here, your State Greens MP for Melbourne. My area includes Kensington, where I know a lot of you are from. Thank you so much for having me. I'm joining you here from Parliament House in Victoria. You can see I'm sitting in my office today. And I'm here to present an award to a young woman who has shown leadership when it comes to our environment, an award that I give to a Mac student every year. And the reason I do this, some of you may know, is because before I joined Victorian Parliament as a Greens MP, I was the CEO of a national youth climate change organisation. And our mission was to educate young people, to inspire young people, to take action on climate change and to raise their voices to help young people lobby their state and federal governments all the way up to the UN. Because ultimately we know that when it comes to issues like climate change and environmental sustainability, it's us and it's young people who are the ones who are the most affected, yet our voices are often not heard. And we know that governments are often not doing nearly enough to protect young people's future. But young people all across Australia and the world are stepping up and they're saying to their leaders, this is not good enough. And young people are starting to take leadership. So I want today to present an award to a young woman at MAC who's doing just that. And the award, award today for young women's environmental leadership goes to Bilha Ryan. <laughs>
Thank you, Ellen. I am pleased to now introduce Danny Pearson, our local state member for the seat of Essendon, to present the Marshall Medal STEM Award. It's such a delight to join the MAC community for this special occasion, and I'm thrilled to have the opportunity to announce the recipient of this year's 2021 Marshall Medal for Excellence in STEM. We know that science, technology, engineering and mathematics play a critical role in preparing children for the jobs of our future industries and endeavours. The importance of high quality STEM education is perhaps now more important than ever as we look to innovate and enhance the way we live and work. While the most recent data is encouraging, showing some real improvements for girls and women's representation and participation in STEM study and careers, we still have work to do to see gender equality in STEM in Australia. Too often, we are seeing girls opt out of studying these subjects, particularly in their final years of school. And once girls self-select out of these areas of the curriculum, it is often difficult for them to re-engage, limiting the option for girls to work towards high paying STEM jobs. If we're really serious about tackling gender inequality in our society, we must address the gender pay gap, which is still all too prevalent in 2021. By encouraging and supporting girls to reach for futures in the arena of STEM, we can help to close this gap and provide a better and fairer future for our children. I established the Marshall Medal for Excellence in STEM in 2016 because I'm incredibly passionate about promoting girls and women in these fields. If receiving this medal can play a role in encouraging a young female student to stick with STEM, then I reckon that's something worth striving for. Now, without further ado, it is my great honour to award the 2021 Marshall Medal for Excellence in STEM to Eleanor McRae. And best wishes to your continuing studies. The Inside Publications Award will be presented by Jess Friedman. This award goes to a student who consistently demonstrates a high work ethic in their English classes and strives to achieve their best. So this year's Inside Award goes to Fatima Mohammed. She is an English student that we believe has shown great determination, great strength and resilience through an incredibly challenging year. So Fatima, we hope this award helps you prepare for the challenges, but also the successes of Year 12 English, and we wish you all the best. This is for you. The Mooney Valley Youth Foundation each year offers a student from MAC the Mooney Valley Youth Encouragement Award. This year, the foundation kindly offered the award to two students. Please welcome Meg Rawlins, our assistant principal, who will be presenting the award on behalf of the Mooney Valley Youth Foundation. Thank you, Marcella. The Mooney Valley Foundation offers the Mooney Valley Youth Encouragement Award to each of the secondary schools in the area to recognise senior students who have shown resilience, humour and empathy in their final year. This year, Mount Alexander College was invited to nominate two students who have shown grit and tenacity this year. I would like to congratulate our two recipients, Grads 2022, Henry Tran and Zebib Gebrelassi. Please now enjoy the VCE Music Exam Band performance of Pretty Young Thing.
Lynn Bentley will now present the Hotham Mission Bursary recipients. Thanks, Brandon. It gives me great pleasure to speak on behalf of Hotham Mission. They're a branch of the Uniting Church and they've been a fantastic supporter of students at Mount Alexander College for a number of years now. They help to fund uh, access for students to devices. They support the VCAL um, Food for Life program. And I know they provide individual brokerage for some students. Last year they introduced the Hotham Mission Bursary and one of our Year 12 students last year received that for assistance with his tertiary pathway. So this year they've expanded it to two uh, bursaries. Um, it's a financial support for young people who've demonstrated during their Year 12 year uh, that they deserve some assistance to go on with their tertiary studies. So the money can be spent on books, um, fees, uh, anything that will allow them to increase their access and use of their tertiary pathway. So it gives me great pleasure, first of all, to award the Hotham Mission Bursary to Henry Tran. The second award is the Hotham Mission Education Assistance Payment, and that goes very richly rewarded to Selma Salat. <laughs> Daniel Kingham and Jade McQuilkin will now present the Mitchell Salatano Award. My name is Jade McQuilkin and I'm the Senior Project Officer at the Maribyrnong and Mooney Valley Len and I'm here with Daniel Kingham who is working at the Essendon Keelor College as a Careers Coordinator. Is that right, Dan? Yeah, yeah that's correct. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, we have an award that is the first time running um, and thank you for everyone who has nominated a student. We've had some great applications. The award is called the Mitchell Salentano Trade Award and it's for the student who demonstrates the most outstanding worth ethic and application during a trade placement. The award has been created in honour for the memory of the local student, Mitch, after his passing. Mitch has, was an outstanding VCAL trade student from the Essendon Keeler College who demonstrated great worth ethic and gained an apprenticeship from his placement. So we are looking for students with similar attributes to Mitch um, and in hope to um, inspire and promote the program and the placement. Um, and we have had Nelson Alexander Essendon donate $500 for the lucky winner. Um, and we're gonna talk about that a little bit more, but I'd like to hand it over to Daniel. Thanks very much, Jade. So yeah, so this is, a, this is an award that's new this year that's been um, created um, through the LEN and in conjunction with the EKC and also with the approval of Mitch's parents. Um, obviously after Mitch's unfortunate passing at the start of this year, um, we thought um, to honour him um, as, as he was a fantastic trade student on his one work placement, um, we thought this would be a really good way to honour him and, and hopefully give some, some young students um, who are you know just going through that trade pathway a bit of a, a bit of a kickstart um, and a bit of recognition for their for their achievements. Um, Mitch was a really good student. He did uh, VCAL here at EKC and he, he did a plumbing placement. Um, where he shone though was was in his was at his work site. He was really good in terms of his work ethic, his his initiative. Um, he just had that get up and go to to really impress his employers. Um, and through his work placement, he actually got a got a, 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 an apprenticeship, not through the actual employer, but through a contact of that employer. Um, and, and he was able to use that to, to start an apprenticeship and, and start his career path. Um, so I'm, I'm really glad that this award is, is, is here for Mitch for not just this year, but for coming years. Uh, and I'm sure the, the winner um, will be a highly deserving student and hopefully it'll um, give, you, give that person a bit of a kickstart for their, uh, their trade career path. Thanks, Dan, and congratulations to the winner. We wish you all the best, and all the nominations as well were equally very deserving. So congratulations and well done. 
Congratulations to Roman Key, the winner of the Mitchell Celentano Award. We would like to sincerely thank Mitchell's family who are watching our awards night tonight and who made this award possible by acknowledging and supporting graduates of our VCAL program. Alison Lovett, our Careers and Pathways counselor, will be presenting the Kwong Lee Dao Young Scholar Award. You forgot and dream maker. <laughs> so this academic enrichment program is designed to support high achieving Victorian students. Students get a taste of university life and a chance to connect and meet other students. Furthermore, it provides opportunity for recipients to develop the skills required for leadership and community involvement. It's a program that MAC has been involved with, with for a number of years. So this year, the Kwong Lee Dao Award has been given to Riley Walsh. Ms. Angelico will now present the 2022 Melbourne Principals Scholarship Award. Every year, Melbourne University offers a, a scholarship to a student who has excelled academically, achieving high scores throughout Year 12. And this award this year goes to Zhu Yong Yoon. Congratulations. <laughs> Michael Buckingham will now present the International Student Higher High Achiever Award. The International Student High Achiever Award goes to a student who I've had pleasure to work with over a number of years. This student has consistently demonstrated growth and incredible achievement. Um, they are a senior student, so through across all their SACs and their coursework. Um, and this student is a fantastic role model for all the other students in the International Student Program. And the award goes to Lavinia Montero da Silva. Previous, our next award was previously known as the Rotary Award and traditionally was presented by a beloved member of our community, Del King. Del King sadly passed away in 2018 and the award is now named in her honour as a tribute to Del's work in supporting young people in our community. I now invite Leslie McCarthy to present this award. Good evening, everyone. My name is Leslie McCarthy and I'm the president of the Rotary Club of Flemington, Kensington. Our club is proud to present the Del King Award each year to a student entering year 11 at Mount Alexander College. Del King was a past president of our club who sadly passed away in 2018. Del was a serving police officer and was passionate about opportunities for youth, especially multicultural youth in our community. She believed in the power of education and believed passionately in opportunities for young people, especially women. In her years in Rotary, Del was involved with Youth Exchange and as the Youth Service Chair, as well as supporting our local community project. This year, we are pleased to announce that the Del King Award is presented to Havon Sani, Congratulations, Havon. We look forward to working with you in the near future. Del King's involvement in our school and wider community 
will continue to be remembered and celebrated. I would now like to welcome Ms. Michael Buckingham, Senior Academic School Advisor to present the Ampol All-Rounder Award. This award celebrates role models who have demonstrated achievement in a breadth of areas. Students who receive this award are recognized for their all-round contribution to their school and local communities. So the Ampol All-Rounder Award goes to a student who um, has maintained very high academic standards but is an all-rounder in the sense that they demonstrate the values of leadership, service, community, um, they've had a fantastic involvement in the arts and sports throughout the school and I think above all this student always um, models integrity to the highest standards. So the Ampol Best All-Rounder Award goes to Madison Civitarese. We now welcome Sarah Franklin from Bendigo Bank to present the Community Bank Seddon Scholarship. Hi, my name is Sarah Franklin and I'm the Chair of Inner West Community Enterprises, the business behind Community Bank Seddon. And I'm thrilled to be able to present two scholarships this evening. We have been able to award two $4,000 scholarships, one to Brendan Henry and one to Zabib Gebrelassi. And I want to congratulate Brendan on achieving a scholarship for leadership and academic excellence and Zabib for leadership and academic endeavour. As a board member of Inner West Community Enterprises, we are so thrilled that we're able to support students on their tertiary education. We're really proud of you. We cannot wait to hear your stories. We want to continue to support and know and learn and really be here to, to see what you become with this scholarship. So congratulations. You've been selected by Man Alexander College for all of the work that you've done. And we hope that this opens some amazing doors for you. Uh, and we're really proud. Congratulations. Thank you, Sarah, and a huge congratulations to Brendan and Zabib. I'll now pass it over to Lachlan to continue the night. Ms. Ed Jellico will now present the Mac Professional Learning Fellowship. The Mac Professional Learning Fellowship is an annual scholarship of $5,000 that successful staff member undertakes a research project in an area identified as a priority by the school. The successful recipients of this award will be undertaking a study of phonics intervention strategies to improve student achievement in reading. This work will complement the literacy intervention program that commenced last year, as well as building the capacity of all teachers as teachers of reading. The 2022 Mac Fellowship has been awarded to Erin Murphy and Anna Hill. Before we publicly congratulate our Year 12 graduates, name the College Ducks and announce the winner of the House Cup, please enjoy our final VCE media screening, Be Your Light, by Joshua Coates. So caught up in the middle Thinking of drowning in those blue eyes I'm losing sight cause I am falling I'm so deep down, deep down And it's not a lie That I die I can't hide
This year, MAC recognizes the academic growth and achievement of students across all year levels. Claire Runcie will present the docs for entry, above entry eight, and above entry nine, followed by Mr. Buckingham, who will announce the above entry 10 and graduate 2022 docs. I would now like to invite our principal, Ms. Angelico, assistant principal, Megan Rollins, and senior school academic advisor, Michael Buckingham, to the stage. Uh, congratulations to Carla Francis for you being our entry ducks. <laughs> congratulations to Rowan Tonneson for being our above entry eight ducks. And finally, congratulations to Ruben Caro for as our above entry nine ducks. Our above entry eight ten ducks is Sol Faulkner. And our graduates of 2022 Ducks is Zoe He. Yeah. <laughs> now we've come to the time of the stars of our show tonight, the graduates of 2021. Tonight's award night is all about celebrating student achievement. And to our current year 12s, there's no greater achievement tonight than that which the 46 of you have achieved. You've made it to the end of 13 years of formal schooling. And on top of that, you've done so under the most challenging conditions Victorian students have ever faced. When I'm asked to describe this year level, three things come to mind. I think firstly of your resilience, I think, then think of your sheer determination, but above all, I think about your ability to focus on what, what we actually have control over. You folks controlled how you responded to repeated lockdowns and periods of remote learning. You made important pathway decisions about how you would make it through to the end of the year. You controlled how you approached your coursework, your SACs, your TAFE work, allowing you to meet the outcomes for your VC and VCAL courses. You controlled how you prepared for the end of year exams, which are now finally behind you. And last of all, you were able to control how you viewed these last two years. Rather than simply taking the easy option and giving up, you all actively chose to view your experience as something that could be overcome. You chose to view the pandemic as an opportunity to learn about yourselves and how you respond in the face of adversity. Please take comfort in the knowledge that you've done absolutely everything that was within your control. Over the next coming weeks, you will be asked uh, to, again, make some very important decisions about the next steps of your journey. In making these choices, I want you to consider a few things. Firstly, that there are always many different avenues that will get you to where you want to get to. Remember that many of us, in fact, change our, change our minds later in life. I encourage you 
Don't, don't simply choose to do something because others do it. Always make your own choices as you're the one who's going to need to live with them. In two weeks' time, your final results and certificates are released. To the scored VCE students, your ATAR is just a number. A low ATAR won't define what you can and cannot do. Equally, a, high, a, a good ATAR won't guarantee you success in the rest of your lives. As you leave us, I ask you to always take this concept of control with you. Focus on what you can control, accept what you cannot control, and always question whether there is anything else that is within your power to do. It's been my absolute pleasure being your senior school academic advisor over the last few years. We've been on a roller coaster ride together, and it just won't be the same without you all next year. I hope that you remember your time here at Mac fondly, and please come visit. Uh, visit us and share in your future successes, whatever they may be. On behalf of all the VC and VCAL teachers and staff, we wish you all the best in your future endeavours, whatever they may be. Thank you. Yay. It's now my honour to announce the College Duxes. Many of you may be aware that while schools will typically have one ducks, that is, the top of the graduating class, we in fact have three. Mac acknowledges that success comes in many different forms and that it often looks different for students. As such, tonight we're going to recognise three ducks for 2021. The VCAL ducks, the growth ducks and the VCE college ducks. Firstly, the VCAL ducks is for the student that best demonstrates the values of Mac's VCAL program. This student is a wonderful advocate for this important program and has actively contributed to setting a high standard that other students can aspire to. He regularly supports others in class, demonstrates strong leadership and initiative at the school and represents the college well in the broader community. Our 2021 VCAL Ducks is Manuel Racinos. <laughs> Growth Ducks recognises the student who demonstrates absolute commitment to their learning. While they may not always achieve the highest SAC mark, this student has done everything within their power to learn as much as possible. This student has done her utmost at all times and has maintained the highest level of coursework completion throughout the year. We're just so proud of this student's positive can-do attitude and dedication to her learning. The 2021 Growth Ducks is Bethany Tang. <laughs> Last but not least, the VCE College Ducks is typically the student who receives the highest ATAR. While these results have not yet been released, we have absolute certainty that this student's dogged persistence will pay off. While there were a number of other close contenders, this student has proven that they can overcome any obstacle. They've gone above and beyond in all of their studies and has con constantly push themselves to achieve even greater things. It is my honour to announce that the 2021 VC College Ducks is none other than our school captain, Brendan Henry. <laughs> I would now like to introduce individually all of our graduates of 2021. Muhammad Abdinur. Mary Isabel Antolin. Sarah Parrick. Muhammad Awais. Samira Bakata. Madison Chivitoreze. 
feel the pain. Sorry. Feel the pain to cock. Tony Din. Denza Flores. Zabib Gebrasase. Luca George. Alec Judici. Tian Grobler. Abdullahi Haji. Yakub Hashi. Nastea Hassan. Kobe Halu. Brendan Henry. An Huang. Aisha Hussein. Ayani EK. Izzy Numajina. Muhammad Jama. Roman Key. Soul Last. Hao Ma. Tommy Meldrum. Faduma Muhammad. Najud Muhammad. Lavinia Monteiro da Silva. Quay Nguyen. Aris Papa Demetrio Dickey. Sim Fan. Manuel Racinos. Salma Salat. Mawi Sani. Nazra Sheikh Omar. Eva Smith. Henry Tran. Bethany Tang. Timothy Vines Dryer. Julia Wahed. Zachary Wicks. Ju Yong Yoon. And last but not least, Jax Shang. Guests, colleagues, friends and family, I now present to you the graduates of 2021. As we draw to a close, we welcome Miss Angelico to announce the winners of the House Cup. I would like to invite the student leaders from each house and heads of house to the stage for this much anticipated event. So I don't actually even know who's winning here, so you might have to help me out here.
this last? <laughs> okay. In fourth place is Athena. Is that right? Yes. Yes. I've got to tell you, the suspense is killing me. In third place is Poseidon. So it can only be Apollo and Artemis, right? Who's first? So in first place is Artemis. Congratulations to all the houses. understand that Artemis hasn't won this in how many years? Oh, ever. Wow. Well done, Artemis. And well done, everyone in Artemis House. So, we did have quite a number of carnivals this year, and I'm absolutely thrilled to announce the winners of the cross country, Apollo. <laughs> the winners of the swimming, Apollo. The winners of Athletics, Poseidon. And for their fundraising efforts, congratulations to Poseidon. So, the house cup goes to <laughs> Artemis. Um, well, uh, thank you to Miss Angelico and congratulations to Artemis. I'm disappointed it wasn't Poseidon, but better luck next year. Uh, I'm sure I speak for all the MCs here tonight when I say it's been a pleasure to spend the night with you to celebrate all of our achievements. Finally, some thank yous to our graduates. Congratulations for your efforts across the last two years. You have demonstrated unbelievable strength and resilience. We wish you all the best with your future endeavors. To the broader members of our community, including but not limited to our presenters tonight, our heartfelt thanks for your continued support of our college. To our parents, family members, and community members who have viewed our awards night online, your support in our learning is invaluable. To our staff, your hard work and dedication this year has contributed to all of our students' ability to feel and experience success. To Ms. Angelico and Ms. Rollins, your leadership throughout this year has been unwavering. We would like to give a heartfelt thanks to one of our 2022 graduates, Talia Dow, who has been a photographer this evening. We <laughs> We would also like to ask Didim Aiden to the front. Didim has played a significant role behind the scenes at each awards night for the past three years. We wish Didim luck in her new adventure to Queensland. 
Thank you, Ms. Aiden. And finally, most importantly, to all of our award recipients, you have all demonstrated your ability to lead by example and thrive in your learning. Congratulations to all of your doing, for all of you for doing your best this year. Please now enjoy our final performance by the VC Music Band playing Sal Candy.